Okay, looks like we've got a good crowd. So hello and welcome to the webinar. My name is Neil Cook and today's webinar is all about branching and merging. Uh, originally, this was going to be more of a higher level um, talk about data management in general, but there's been a lot of requests for a little bit more technical detail. So it'd be a, a kind of nice mix between the two. As ever, we try to keep these as engaging and interactive as possible. So if you do have any questions uh, relating to anything, it could be about what I'm talking about, or if you want to ask a question that I might not have, might not be answered or not answered correctly, or to your satisfaction, then please use the GoToWebinar questions panel and type in your question there, and I'll endeavor to answer them either during the presentation or I'll hang around for 10 minutes or so at the end and answer any questions on anything really, but preferably about branching and merging. Okay, so today's topic, as we've already talked about, is branching and merging. And we're going to talk through several different scenarios of, first of all, what it is, how you use it, uh, where it can be used. And then towards the end of the uh, presentation, we'll talk about how you can use branching and merging in the Git style. Uh, anybody who uh, knows anything about software development, uh, the Git way of managing data is a lot more, um, a lot more flow. It's easier to work with than traditional uh, version control systems. Uh, if you can see from the image on the left there, we've kind of stolen some of the the ideas and the graphics from Git in order to create our branches. Uh, our different workspaces within an Onshape document. Um, we don't follow it exactly uh, because really, you know, software development is all about moving blocks of text around and it's really not quite as um, difficult to do as trying to merge lots of 3D geometry. So we'll look at uh, how, it, what, how it works, ways that we can get it to work uh, to, to fit your workflow better. And I'll also talk about some limitations as well. And again, if you've got any questions relating to how I'm showing how something is done, again, please don't hesitate to ask. Now, the first thing we need to talk about really, and I think it's important, is a glossary of terms. Now, there are some terms which are obvious. There are also ones that we use internally at Onshape. So if you're ever talking to an Onshape employee, either personally or through a forum, and we use some of these terms, then you're going to be better um, educated about what we're talking about. Uh, then we'll talk about um, what is particular is a workspace. Then we'll look at how you can use workspaces and branches to do real-time collaboration, uh, merge rules, which is an important thing. And again, at the end, get style. Okay, let's move on. So for a glossary of terms, there's probably more, but these are the ones I chose. Um, we'll start at the top level. Now, hopefully everybody knows what a document is. So a document is the top level um, object within Onshape. So a document can contain you know, your parts, assemblies, drawings, PDFs, images, videos. But what's also important is that a document is almost like a unit of PDM. It's like a PDM object, where it is in like old style file-based PDM systems, a PDM uh, unit of object, uh, object was a file. Whereas in Onshape, because you can store lots of different object types within one document. Again, the PDM uh, unit is the document itself. Next is uh, an element, also known as a tab. Now, as we talked about already in this document, you can have your parts assemblies, drawings. Each one of those tabs that you're seeing along the, along the bottom is what's referred to as an element or a tab. Those kinds of words are inter interchangeable. Uh, then we've got histories and microversions, versions, releases, branches, and workspaces. And uh, let's take a look at those. Uh, in, inside uh, a document. Okay, um, this probably isn't the best document to, to work with, so let me just uh, let me just choose another one. Um, let's go for this guy. All right. So when you have uh, so this is like I say the document. So in here you can, can store. Uh, this case we've got the parts or the parts studio where you can have obviously lots of different parts. You have uh, an assembly or in this case, there's two. There is one which is an exploded version of the assembly and one which is uh, the assembly in itself. So these are these are elements. Now, when we're talking about history, of course, being cloud-based, there is no save button. So every action you do, every interaction with the document is stored. And it's also, um, well, it's saved in the database and, it, and it's also replicated amongst 
lots of geographically separated databases as well within milliseconds. So, so really, if there was any any issues anywhere, you know, you've always got your data. So, uh, you never lose the data. Now, what we'll see here uh, in this particular one is that in between each of these, which are versions, then we can see show changes. Okay, we can see there is a number of things that have happened to this document. So all these are everything that's happened. So we've got changes to the drawing, changes to the parts, and you know, there's lots of them. Now this is your history, but each one of these is what we call a micro version. So if you hear that word, a micro version is just simply an entry within the history. And you can see there, for example, this was changed made by Cody on May the 8th. So it gives you a, a running list of what's happened. So every time we do something in Onshape, we don't save the whole document because obviously that could be umpteen megabytes in order to save and we need it to be snappy. So what we're doing with these micro versions is just storing the incremental change, which is why it's so fast. And then if we need to rebuild anything, so for example, you know, if I if I needed to come, um, uh, let's say, go to uh, this tab here, then when I when I do that, what it's actually doing is rebuilding the the original part or the original document, I should say, uh, on those incremental changes from the micro versions, and that's how we're able to go backwards and forwards. And that really gives you your unlimited undo redo, ever since the moment that the uh, the part or the document, I should say, was first created. So you can see this is taking just a little bit longer because it is, um, you know, it's having to go through the previous history and, and rebuild that. But you'll also see that there is lots of different, um, there are lots of different elements or tabs. And these were here before this, I think this document was parted out. So it was, it was split into multiple different documents. So you can see exactly what the changes are uh, in between. Uh, any of the any of those items within the history, and like I say, you can go you can go backwards and forwards at any time. So again, just clicking on the uh, the very uh, latest in the main branch will take you back to uh, where we were or where we started uh, today. That is okay. Um, I mean, what we've also looked at so so that's documents elements histories micro versions. Uh, there's versions and releases. Now, what you'll see again with this with this uh, example here. Is that each of the, each of these, which is represented by a solid dot, is a version. Now, all a version is is a bookmark. You know, there's nothing special about it other than the fact that at this point in time, whichever changes were made, a new version was created. Now, if you can imagine, if you've got working on a document for months or or weeks or whatever, you're going to have a lot of history. So, being able to uh, find your way around it is would be problematic so creating versions at known milestones or, or, or convenient locations just makes it a little bit easier to find your way around the document there also has other uses and those other uses are for creating branches now to create a branch a branch must be created from a version so you can't create a branch from a micro version it has to be from a version and so when we do that, all you need to do here is, is create, right click and select branch to create workspace. And what that will do then is it will create our uh, new workspace that we can carry on working in. Okay, and I, and I won't do that just yet. Okay, um, the other thing is a release. Now that is particular for Onshape professional or enterprise customers. Uh, have release management. Now, a release is essentially a, it is a glorified version, but it has special properties in that you can put in, um, you can go through an approval workflow and allow people to approve before it becomes, becomes usable within perhaps other documents or assemblies. They are also marked differently uh, with, a, with a solid triangle. In fact, I'm not sure if there are any, yes, there is. So there's so this one here. Uh, with a solid triangle was a um, uh, is a release, and if you wanted to see some of the some of the information, you can see that is there is released, and this is how release management work, looks within Onshape. So, you define what you're working with, create your release. In this case, uh, Rev A, along with uh, automatic part numbers, and then release notes and approvers and observers and comments history, and it's just uh, an easier way to or get a more structured workflow into your into your everyday uh, design processes 
Now, finally, what I want to talk about, and it's probably the most important thing, uh, is a workspace and what is a workspace. So what we're looking at here at the moment, and in fact, let me, uh, let me just create a blank document. I'll call it blank. Um, let me just create an empty document in order to explain uh, what a workspace is. So a workspace is essentially um, the area that you work within the document. Okay, that sounds pretty obvious. So if you if you were to start to create a, a sketch on here, for example, and I won't go into too much detail. So create a sketch on there, and you know add a dimension, and perhaps you know add, add a hole in the middle or something like that. Uh, and then extrude it. Now, if you actually to do uh, something like that, then this is your workspace. You will find that any of the elements that you add all added to the workspace, and sorry, wrong button, and then you'll also, each workspace has its own properties and its own units. Okay, big deal, I might hear, I might hear you ask, but what this comes into play is when you start to look at a branch. Now, a branch is a workspace in its own right okay so when you create a branch within uh, within a document it actually creates a brand new workspace and that is a copy of the entire document not just the tab you're working in the element uh, or not you know not just the drawing not just the assembly it works on the entire document and, and again this is all down to the fact it being like a unit of PDM when you create a branch it copies the entire document. Now, it's you can think of it as a save as that you might do in SolidWorks or something like that, where it's taking a copy of everything within the assembly, um, but it, the difference is that it's storing it in the same document. And the fact that it stores it in the same document means that you can then uh, work on that as a separate. Uh, I mean, it's in the essence, it's disconnected, but because it has the same foundation, which is all generated from a version, there are some similarities. So that allows you then to merge changes between the two and also then get more of this Git style um, data management. Okay, hope I'm not losing anybody because it is, it is a complex topic and you perhaps might, if you've not really used branch and merge much, then it might be a little bit confusing at first. So hopefully uh, I, can, I can try and answer any questions that you might have about it. Now, because they are a different workspace, you can do anything you want to them. You can delete it, you can uh, change the units, changing the properties, add extra files in there, create new parts, and it will not affect the main branch because, again, they are totally separate workspaces. So this is ideal if you need to do something like a design scenario, you know, or just a bit of design exploration, I should say. So if you're looking at, well, it would it be better if this... You know, this was a bit thicker, this hole moved over here. You can do all that in a separate branch without worrying about it affecting the main branch. So you might have multiple people working in the main branch, working on design. You don't want to uh, ruin what they're doing. You can work in your own branch. Later on, if you decide that those changes are good, you can merge them back into the main branch. If you don't, you can just delete it and you've nothing, nothing, nothing lost. Now, one of the other benefits is you could use it perhaps to de-feature models for, for FEA. Uh, you could use it for, uh, you know, perhaps, well, we're going to look at collaboration in a moment. But all these different things that you can use branch and emerging for, which might not be obvious at first glance. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at um, some examples of, of what you might use uh, branch and emerging for. Okay, so I had this this original model uh, set up here, and you'll see that um, that Joe is also in this model as well. So there's two of us working in this um, in this design here. It's not really Joe; it's just me. But there are two two windows open here in the same in the same document. Now this is great, of course. You know you can you can do things like this where you would say, okay, well let's edit um, let's come over here and edit sketch two. And we can see that Joe will see that I am editing sketch two, and you know he can come down here and he can add, uh, let's say, a chamfer on this edge. And as I uh, and as I do that, again, I will see that he's creating a new feature. So it's great, and you know it, we always show this when we ever show 
on shape because it's one of our main differentiators being able to because it all works on a database you can have multiple people working at the same time in the same part in the same assembly now this is all very very this is all great and you know works works well when you're perhaps doing a demo but in reality you know people when they're designing might you know play with the model move the rollback bar which is probably the, the main thing uh, delete stuff while they're trying to work out new um, uh, new changes to the model now on all these kind of changes affect every other user which is working who are working on this part so for example you know this is might be a, a classic example of a uh, of when this might happen this is a shock strut from a uh, uh, from a nose landing gear now there might be somebody working on the on the wheel area okay or the or the link arm here and there might be somebody else working on the on the top end of the strut where it goes into where it goes into the cylinder the hydraulic cylinder so typical it's a complex casting or forging well forging in this case and multiple people might be working on this document so this is great you know joe wants to um make some edits to this this shape so he, so he'll go in here and edit sketch three Okay, that's absolutely fine. You can go ahead and do that. But then, you know, I'm doing some changes on here. I want to roll this back. So I want to say, okay, well, here's um, uh, here's extrude two. You know, actually, I'm going to roll it back to there. And what you'll see as soon as I do that is that, whoops, what happened? Suddenly, Joe's sketches disappeared from his very, very eyes. And he's like, well, I don't know what's happened. And in reality what has happened so you can see as a, as as joe tries to sketch he gets errors saying sketch modification failed and the reason for that again is because this is a different kind of history it's like a parametric history so we'll see that sketch three uh, is actually all the way down here in the tree and because uh, i've rolled it back then the sketch doesn't actually exist at this point so this is a classic example where you know working in the same part is fantastic uh, but if you are starting to manipulate the model to make it easier to work with things like using the rollback bar or suppressing features then you're going to upset everybody else who's working on it as well so this is a, a great way or a great reason for using uh, branch and merge within a design now in all these kind of scenarios that we're going to talk about today there are there is a certain amount of discipline required or a little bit of communication required between different people because if you are if you are creating branches and then people are going ahead and deleting references that you might be perhaps looking at um, or working on you know it's not foolproof things will break however if things do break we do have the full history and micro versions that we saw earlier so you can always roll it back if uh, somebody completely messes up the model all right so let's let's take a look at this in uh, in a little bit more detail Okay, so let me let me roll it to the back. So, um, you know, so Joe Joe makes a comment saying he wants to he wants to edit the um, uh, the, the other end of the strut, and that he's going to make a version of it. And in fact, I think there's already a version in this one. Yes, there is. Okay, so there's a, a version here already. So Joe says, okay, well, actually, he's going to go ahead and build a new branch because he wants to work on on the strut on the end of the strut. So he can go ahead and do that. Now, I can't stress enough, whenever you're creating branches or versions, it's very, you know, it's very tempting just to leave the, um, the workspaces as the default names are B1, B2, or V1, V2 versions. And that is fine if your intention is to delete the branch later. Uh, but if you're going to keep the branches, and which we'll look at later with the, uh, the Git style data management, uh, then it's very good idea to to at least name it so we'll, we'll name it uh edit top top of top of strut or something and even a description if, if you want to go ahead and do that now in doing that this is now creating a brand new workspace so it's a complete copy of the entire document and joe can do whatever he wants to that now and it won't affect what i'm doing okay so on here now i can quite happily uh where was it before let's go back here and uh roll this guy back I can quite happily uh, go ahead and work on that and we'll see that Joe isn't affected at all so now he can uh, now he can come in here and he kind of add his chamfers and his fillets and whatever else he needs to do on here uh, so let's have a two more fillet uh, chamfer on there 
Okay, and and even go ahead and edit edit some of the sketches. And I'll just do the one uh, the one change here. Let's I don't know. Let's let's move this guy up a bit. Six hundred. Okay, so we've so we've made a, a couple of changes there in in the branch, and I could do whatever changes I need to here. In fact, let me just uh, perhaps add a add my own fillet on here. Okay, whatever. I go ahead and roll back. Now, whenever Joe then has finished what finished his edits, he knows that I've, he's not interrupted me, and I've not interrupted him because we know we're working on on different areas of the model, so we've nothing to worry about. So when that's finished, uh, you know, Joe can go ahead and, and message me uh, or do a comment within Onshape, tell me that he's finished, and go ahead and merge those in. Now, to do a merge, uh, you there is concept of a source and a target. So the source is where the changes are coming from. The target, obviously, is where the change is going to. Now, you open the, the target. In this case, it's the main branch. And we're going to merge the changes from the source, which is this in this case is this branch. So all we need to do is right click on the on the branch and select merge into current workspace. And you'll see there within uh, within a couple of seconds that's changed there and we've now got a chamfer on the end. Now at this point uh, either Joe or myself can go ahead and delete the branch if you don't want it anymore. You know it's just to do it just as a convenience. So we can go ahead and delete that. Uh, the only thing you need to mention, uh, remember about deleting a branch uh, is that it can't be undone. Okay, there are caveats to that, and the caveat is if you created a version in that branch. But in general, if you just want it to work like that and do two people working on the same part, then you can delete that branch and everybody can carry on. Uh, likewise, I'm not going to not going to repeat myself here, but the but likewise, I think it's worth it's worth looking at. That if you have um, uh, from the assembly point, it's probably more likely that somebody be working on the same assembly. Uh, you know, starting to put parts together or sub assemblies or anything like that. And again, you're going to get the uh, the same kind of interference when you've got more than one person working on the same on the same document. And I'm not going to do lots of changes here, but the idea here is that if you've got the same um, uh, same assembly open. And you're starting to, you know, you want to come in here and uh, say you want to insert uh, an assembly, and we'll insert this end cap assembly. Okay, and we'll place that there. And you know, I'm just about to go ahead and mate uh, and mate this guy here. Uh, let's mate that, and we're just about to mate it on the on the end here, when all of a sudden, you know, the other guy comes over here and hides that part and you're like oh hang on a minute i've um i've just gonna you know i was just about to mate it to that and i can't can't find it now so then as that person has then got to go ahead and you know unhide it so he goes okay well you know damn it i was going to i was going to mate to that so he hides it again and it appears um well it well, the difference is there. It won't it, because I'm editing the, the the mate. It won't it won't appear over here. But the idea is, of course, that uh, you know any of these changes could be happening as you're working on something. You know, obviously, as you're working on a more complex assembly, you want to start hiding stuff. You can even start hiding the things that I'm trying to assemble. Uh, but essentially, uh, you know, you could, you're going to get this conflict where you've got multiple people working on the same assembly. Parts are being hi hidden. Parts are being moved. And uh, it just makes the whole thing uh, a lot more difficult. Okay, so another example there where you would create the branch. So you could create multiple assembly branches and then merge them together after, we, after you're finished. And again, it just kind of stops this kind of um, conflict uh, from happening between multiple users at the same time. So bear that in mind. Create branches if you've got multiple people working on the same part, but probably more importantly, if you've got multiple people working on the same assembly. Okay, so uh, to prevent things hiding, disappearing unexpectedly, uh, you know, make a branch and then merge the changes in later. Uh, I've got a question here. Uh, when you deleted the branch, what happened to Joe who was in that branch? Okay, that's, uh, that's a good question. Um, so, so, so he'll be then uh, kicked back into the main branch. So you cannot 
delete the main branch. That is that is fixed. It's okay, so you cannot delete that. You can only delete a um, a manually created branch. Uh, if somebody's in that branch and you del and you uh, delete it, uh, then they will get kicked out. And actually, it's probably a good question if they've not merged it in. Uh, what happens? Uh, and the answer is, he will actually just go. He will lose his changes and it will go back into the main branch. And this is why I say it is necessary. Uh, although it'd be nice to claim that everything's done automatically, it is necessary in those kinds of instances that you uh, have some form of communication uh, about what is going on within the, within the design. All right. Okay, let's talk about uh, uh, about merge rules because we're going to uh, look at how we merge lots of different document types together. Now, for a part studio, uh, this is probably where you're going to get the most, um, not so much conflicts, but the trying to understand what is going on, this is the most difficult. The other ones are uh, like assemblies and drawings are pretty much straightforward. So when you are merging two part studios together, and bearing in mind it's part studios, not parts. So it's any parts that are in the part studios could all be affected by any kind of merging operation. So you're, branch, uh, so you're merging from the branch, the source, to the main, the target. You can do it the other way around if you wish. So you can merge from the, from the main into your current branch that you're working in if it makes more sense. You know, if somebody's done a change in the branch because there is no... Um, the main branch is the only one that cannot be deleted, but other than that, there is no differentiation between them because all they are is separate workspaces within the document. So you can so you can merge in either direction. Now, if there are sketch conflicts, so um, you know somebody's added uh, different constraints which make uh, the sketch in each branch. Um, <clears throat> you know, somebody might have one vertex uh, coincident with the origin. And the other branch might have a different vertex coincident with the origin. When you merge those two together, you know how does it know which vertex that that you should use? So there will be so it will highlight as a conflict there, and the sketch will go red. Same thing with dimensions. If you dimension things twice, um, then there's going to be a conflict. Now for dimension values, whether this is sketch values or extrude direct uh, extrude depths or anything like that, uh, then the then the source will win. So if, for example, we change the length of this shaft here and then merged it back into the main, the length of the shaft, and um, sorry, say if the length of the shaft was modified in both in both uh, branches, uh, then the dimensional change is going to is going to win from the source because you're merging it back into the into the main. So uh, so in that case, it doesn't matter who made the the last the change last because you are doing the the merge in that direction, the dimension is going to be uh, valid for that. Uh, likewise, if you delete or add features in the source and then merge it over to the target, that is going to take pre precedence as well. So uh, any any features or parts or that have been added or deleted, again, is going to take precedent. And, and then the final thing is conflicting features. So for example, if you have a an edge which has a fillet on one and a chamfer on the other, then there's going to be a, um, a conflict. And, and we can see how that works. And I'm going to jump back in here. I don't think I need Joe anymore, so let's just uh, minimize him. And let's go back to that block with a hole that was creating. There it is, called blank. Okay, so here is my uh, my, my basic shape. I have a sketch with one diamond, with, uh, well, two dimensions really. And at this point, I decide I want to go ahead and create a, a version. I'm just going to leave it as it is, you know, bad practice, but for the purpose of this, let's just leave it as V1. And then um, I will just go ahead and, and make some changes on here. So let me just, uh, for example, let's change the height of the extrude. Let's add a uh, fill it on this top edge and perhaps uh, fill it around these edges. Uh, let's fill it those as well. Let's make them nice and big. Okay, and those are my changes in the main branch. Now what you'll see is because I created the version at right the way back here and then made the changes, when I branch off here to create a new workspace, then you will see the changes or, or as it was at version one. Okay, so 
I've created the branch, but somebody's gone ahead and added added the extra features and so on in there. Okay, and so what I'll do in this particular version, let's um, let's edit the sketch. Okay, and let's uh, let's make that a hundred, and we'll add a dimension on here. Make that a hundred, and we'll change this to be fifty, for example. Okay, that's not attached on the center. I was wondering why it was blue. Let me just go and make those coincident. Okay, so change the shape. Uh, we'll leave that. We'll leave the height as it is. So I've not modified the height there. And let's just perhaps add some uh, uh, add a chamfer on here. And what else should we do? Uh, I'm just for argument's sake, let's just go ahead and show this out. Okay, now there is two lots of sets of features where they clearly conflict. And in fact, one more change I'm going to do here is back in the main branch. So I can just click on that to open the main branch. I'm going to add a conflict for a dimension in the original sketch. So there's my uh, my main branch. Let's edit the sketch. And we'll add this dimension on here. Let's call it 200. So if you imagine now, after version 1, I've created two dimensions along the, along the same edge. So that's... Um, so that's clearly a conflict in there. Let's just go ahead and make those two guys coincident. Okay, so we've uh, we know that there's, there's been two branches being worked on. There's the main branch and the and the uh, branch called B1 in this case, and we want to see what the differences are and merge those in. Now, one really cool feature is the uh, compare history. Now you can do this from uh, individual branches, versions, micro versions. So you can see if you uh, if you expand these, then you can actually do a comparison between any of these micro versions here. But it's always best to either do it from a version or do it from the label because the label for the current branch is always the latest change. So if we're going to do a, a compare history between the main and the B1, that's then going to open the, uh, uh, the two versions of the document. Now, if you've got a very complex document, you know, 200 feature parts and 1,000 ascent parts assemblies and so on, then it might take a little bit longer to uh, open the compare. But this is then going to show you uh, the differences between the two parts, which are actually quite considerable. Um, so those are the two graphical versions, but probably more useful here is the differences in the sketch. Now, clicking on these here, so again, these are the main and the branch, it tells me that sketch one in both of those exists in both of those, but they are not equal. Um, um, but because the way a sketch is all defined within the graphics area, uh, the only thing, what it's showing you here is the sketch dialogue, in which case there's only tells you which plane it is working from. But if you take a look at the um, slider to go between main and B1, you can see the sketch is highlighted so you get a better idea of which uh, of which is of what it's talking about. So you can see clearly there's different sizes in there. Uh, this extrude. What is the change here? Again, you can see graphically that uh, clearly there is a different different size in there. But because we extrude is defined from the dialog, then you can see uh, uh, the changes here. So they're both blind except one sixty six and one twenty five. Okay. Uh, in in this version, there is a fillet, which doesn't exist in the branch. Likewise, there is a chamfer and a shell in here. Now, I know it's a very popular request to be able to have a selective merge capability. But uh, at this point, when we're, when we're merging, we're merging the entire workspace. Now, please bear that in mind. Uh, we talked about creating two workspaces, the original workspace, which was the main, and then we've done a uh, a direct copy of it to create the second workspace. Do whatever changes you need, and then we're going to merge them back together. But it is the entire workspace. So you can't individually select a part or a part studio or assembly uh, or a drawing. You have to do them uh, the entire um, the entire workspace, which can be problematic depending on how many changes you've done. Uh, but just be wary of that and what those what those changes will be. Nice thing to say, of course, is if uh, things do get messed up, you've always got the micro versions, the history, you can roll it back uh, to before the merge operation. All right, so um, so how do we do uh, the merge? Okay, well, so again, we're going to go back to main. 
So you're going to go open the target and then merge from the source. Now what you'll see here is now if I merge from here, okay, everything looks pretty good. Okay, now if we refer back to those rules that I mentioned uh, earlier, then we'll see that sketch is highlighted, chamfer is highlighted, uh, but what you'll see is that we've got, we've maintained the extrude. Now, because the extrude depth is taken from the main branch and not from the, uh, the source, uh, because it was changed in the main branch, but it wasn't changed in the source. Okay, so let me try, let me try and just uh, articulate that differently. So when, it, when we created version one, uh, this extrude was 25 millimeters high. Uh, then we branched off it, but in branch one, we did not change the size, okay? But in main, we did. So it's not, doesn't move everything. It's just whatever has changed. So because the extrude depth hasn't changed, it's used the extrude depth from main, okay? Second thing is, um, you know, we've got, the, we've got the shell in the bottom there. That's all, that's all well. But when we did the chamfer, okay, uh, it's basically saying edge of extrude. Now this can be uh, a little bit difficult to work out where the edge is because it doesn't display the edge because the edge doesn't exist. Okay, so that could be uh, a little bit problematic. Now the reason for that is because uh, this fillet has consumed the edge, so this chamfer doesn't know what to do. So again, if I if I go ahead and suppress that, you'll see the chamfer appears. Okay, not the easiest thing to do, admittedly, uh, because it doesn't show you which edge is consumed. But it, just to show you that it will bring the feature in if it's changed, uh, but it'll just it'll just highlight it as red because the reference for the edge is missing. Okay, and then you've got a choice. You've got a bit of conflict resolution to do. Do you keep the fillet or do you keep the chamfer? Again, if we had selective merge, it might have been a bit easier, but it's not impossible to try and work out uh, what the best solution is between the two. And especially if you're doing the compare, because when we did the compare, you can highlight the feature in the tree. And, you know, you can always, even though we've merged, you can always go back to the compare. So for example, I said you can compare from uh, here. So again, so we could actually compare before the merge. So we've decided this is a conflict. Uh, how do we fix it? Well, we're going to uh, check, take a look at the difference between this, gap, this micro version here this one here and it will show me uh, the exact thing um, that that we saw previously let me just do that again so we're going to do compare between that guy and that guy and then we'll see exactly the uh, uh, the, the same the same compare that we had before okay so then you can see exactly Okay, well, this is the chamfer that failed. Where is it? It's this guy here. Okay, so if there is a conflict, you can always go back to the original compare to see to see what was going on uh, and, and how you can possibly fix that. Okay, uh, the other things that have ha happened, of course, is that we have the, um, we'll just go ahead, uh, let's just go ahead and delete that. We don't need that anymore. And the final thing here is that the sketch is highlighted. So if we, if we go into here, We'll see, although it um, it took the data from the source and over and overrode what was in the in the target, uh, it still got a conflict because it's added those two dimensions, uh, the hundred and the two hundred. So, of course, you got a choice: delete either one of these. But it makes sense. We we want to um, merge that size in, so we can just go ahead and delete that. The sketch is now solved and then there's any kind of conflict has been resolved between those two versions of a workspace. So very simple example. Yes, I know uh, it might be a little bit more involved in something a little bit more complex, uh, but that capability is there. So I think it's worthwhile bearing in mind that when you are working in a branch or you have a colleague that's working in a branch, that they do have to be uh, mindful to a certain extent of what changes you are making. Uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a lot easier if you work if it's just yourself working in the one document. Then obviously you know yourself what's changed and what and what hasn't. Uh, so again, if you're using branches just to do design exploration, you know that you know you're not going to step on your own toes. Uh, whereas if working with a team, a little bit of communication would be required. 
All right. Okay, uh, merge rules for assemblies. Now this is a lot more straightforward. Uh, that was quite involved looking at the different uh, conflicts you get with parts. But with assemblies, it's a lot easier. Uh, and again, uh, if we we saw in that machine frame, it's nice to be able to build branches when you've got multiple people working in an assembly because they don't you know, hide in parts, which is something that you do all the time when you're trying to do mating just to see what's going on. Uh, doesn't affect anybody else. Now, when you merge from the source into the target, uh, the source pretty much takes um, pre precedence over everything. It works in kind of the same way in uh, as parts. So, for example, if you had um, if you had an offset set in a, in a mate in the main, and you didn't make the change in the source, then of course that offset will be maintained in the in the target. Um, but as a rule, anything that's done in the source takes precedence. So if you've added 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 or deleted parts or mates, those are going to be um, uh, taken across into the target. And then if there's any conflicting mates, uh, again, you would generally get two mates appearing uh, in the tree that are both red. And then it's up to you to decide whether you're going how or how you're going to actually fix those changes. Uh, and then last, we'll talk about uh, the merge rules for drawings. Now, this is, uh, again, um, a little bit different. And this also applies to any other files that you might have uploaded into your workspace. So uh, any PDFs and images or videos, these same rules apply as they do for drawings. Uh, because, uh, uh, and it's all down to do that drawings, because we, um, we have a third-party developer, Graeber, who does our drawings, that's, it's treated as a separate kind of object inside, uh, inside on chips. This is why there is a difference between drawings and parts and assemblies. So when you um, branch a drawing, okay, and the drawing in the source has changed, then when you merge those, um, when you merge two together, so you're merging the source to the target, anything, the drawing um, that is in the source will be uh, taken into the into the main. Now, behind the scenes, what's happening here, it's not actually merging the changes, it's actually completely overwriting the, the drawing. Same sort of thing with files or images, videos, whatever. It's simply, if it's changed in the source, then it's going to override, or overwrite, sorry, uh, everything in the target. Now, if, you, if, some, if the drawing or a file has changed within the target and you merge from the source into the target then um, then that means that nothing's going to change because there's because it's always going to take the one that's changed as the as the uh, as the master if you like so if it's changed in the target and you're merging from the source it's going to keep the target okay and ignore the source and then finally if you if it's changed in both then in this case it's always going to be the source which overwrites the target. Okay, so just bear that in mind with regards to what has changed. So if nothing's changed in the uh, in the source, but as in the target, it's going to keep the target. Otherwise, it's going to completely override, overwrite. Sorry, the uh, the target from the from the main source. Okay, so that's uh, uh, treated a little bit differently from parts and assemblies, and it's worthwhile bearing in mind uh, what happens there. You do get a um, an error message comes up when you do the merge and it realizes that, that, that it's going to overwrite. Uh, so again, if you made changes there and it's going to overwrite, so it's not acceptable, it's asking you to go to the history and restore to the previous version. Okay. All right, so uh, we'll finish off in a, in a different area in trying or using branching and merging to replicate the Git style uh, version control system. Now, like I mentioned earlier, it cannot be copied identically simply because there's more involved in 3D modeling than there is in moving bunches of text around. Um, so the way the, the Git versioning system works, it basically you know, it doesn't do a full copy of the, um, of the uh, source code for, for software. It doesn't, just, it doesn't just take a whole directory of source code and dump it to another area if you need to make a change because you know, source code for an entire product can be gigabytes of data. So, uh, so it doesn't do that. 
essentially does something similar to microversions and allows you to just do I don't know exactly what it, how it does it, but it, but it's something along those lines. It just takes a small snapshot of the data that you're modifying, so it allows it to do uh, lots of very efficient branching and merging, and it's very popular in the in the software design. So it's it'd be nice if we could replicate that in Onshape, and you can, but it does require discipline and a certain amount of um, yeah. Yeah, discipline. <laughs> okay, it's probably the best way to uh, explain it. Okay, and these are the the, main, the the kind of main rules is that if you're going to follow this type of branching and merging, is to uh, keep the main branch for all your released products or your your released drawings, your released assemblies, your released parts. Then use the individual branches for design edits, and those are just not just design edits, but design creation. And then you can branch off a branch to create extra features if you're working in a team. So if people are, uh, like we saw earlier with the uh, shock strut, if you um, have multiple people working, you can get branches off a branch. And then we're making sure that we're using versions. When we're finished or when you get to a release point is you're merging it back into the main branch. Okay, so the main branch will essentially only hold uh, released versions. If you're using on shape professional or enterprise, you can use the release management at that point, uh, which probably makes a lot of sense. Uh, if you're not, you can still just use regular versions uh, to control your release management and create your revision schemes. Uh, but you can do that uh, within uh, within on shape. Okay, so so the example uh, here, and rather than create a new document, all I'm going to do is uh, restore this guy back to the start. Fact, no, it's probably not a good idea. Let's just go ahead and create a new document. Uh, doc. Okay, so the idea here is that when you create uh, a new document, is the first thing that you do before you do anything is to branch off the start. So if we look here, uh, there is a start branch, which is in, in effect itself is a version. So you can branch off the start, uh, which means it's going to be a completely blank document. So all that's going to be in there is the um, uh, is the the default planes and the origin and, and whatever else that you, that's, that's in there. So we'll create this and you know you might want to call this uh, development or dev and you might want to give this call this the uh, the main branch. In fact, let's just call that dev for short. Uh, I'm not going to open that just yet and the reason I'm not going to do that is because it probably makes good sense as well to actually name the main branch as well. Because you see here that main is called main. You can edit that. So right click and select properties. Uh, and in here, let's call this uh, let's call this release and any kind of description you want to put in there. So it just makes it clear to anybody else who opens this document that this is the, the branch that has all the released parts in it. Now the idea here is that when you're in, in dev here, you can, I'm not going to go crazy modeling here, Let's just do the uh, classic block with a hole. So we're just going to do a, uh, a sketch. I'm not going to bother adding dimensions. Let's just do that guy. Okay, and that's going to be, you know, there's my fantastic design. The design has come to a, a, a certain point in time that we want to consider uh, releasing it. Now, what we're suggesting here is that at the moment, we have the release branch, we have the development branch. But in order to track what is going on between the two branches, we're suggesting that it makes good sense to create a version. So we'll go ahead and create a version. And you would then give this perhaps your own versioning scheme that you might use during development. Okay, so it could be 0 0.1, it could be uh, letters instead of num you know numbers for release, letters for development, whichever your release schedule. Uh, your release procedures uh, are you can you can do that okay and then the idea is that you could then create this release okay from that point you then think okay well this is going to be uh, submitted for release go back to my release branch and then merge from merge from that you can merge from the dev branch but it makes a good good sense to do it from a a known location uh, 
and the reason being for that, and I, I know quite a few people have, have requested this, is that in the uh, in the Git style of version control, it would put a, an arrow back into uh, the main branch, so you would know where that was, where that was merged from. It does actually say it here, merged from 0 0.1, so it does actually make it easier uh, to work from. If you'd have done it from here, it would have just said merged from dev, and that doesn't really tell you much because dev will stay there as more features are added. So although it's no graphical representation of the line going back into the into the main release, you can see it in the uh, in the history here that it's merged from that release there. And assuming this is a release, you would then go ahead and either create a version, or if you're like say if you're using Onshape Professional or Enterprise, you know, go ahead and create a, uh, a full proper release candidate with um, uh, with with version with release numbers and approvers and so on. Uh, so let's call that Reve. Uh, there's no no approvers on this on this in this case. So so go ahead uh, and release that. Okay, so that means that when anybody opens this document, because what happens here is if you share a document with somebody. Even if you might be within um, a branch, so we so we say we're in the in the dev branch, for example. Um, whenever they open the document, unless they specifically change branch, they will always be dumped into the main branch, or in this case, the release branch. So it's so they will always ever see uh, the current state of the release. Now, the caveat or warning here is that you can actually um, you can actually make changes to this release branch if I, let me just uh, open that again so you can see the release okay so you can see that's released there so people could actually make changes here um, so that if somebody opened the document it looks like that is the latest release so that is something that uh, perhaps should be aware of but uh, the fact that you've got either a version or a release in this main branch it makes it clear that those are the main changes now back in this uh, uh, dev branch here you can carry on um, adding more features go ahead and add the fillet uh, but perhaps if there are multiple people working on this you can then create a branch from a branch okay and it's probably a good idea that you name this and it might you might want to call it to uh, say call it feet for feature for short uh, let's call it adding chamfers for argument's sake okay uh, so this is somebody else working on on the on the uh, on the design. So they've created their own branch, and they can go ahead and start adding adding details in there. So you can see they're adding uh, chamfers on here, um, and let's add, uh, let's add chamfers around this top edge, for example. Okay, and that now just gives you uh, a, an easier way to work with multiple people, as we saw earlier. When you've got multiple people working in the same part, multiple people working in the same assembly, there can be some conflict if people start making changes, rolling back, hiding parts, it can make it a little more difficult. So if then you branch off a branch, they can do whatever they need to do. And then back in the dev branch, um, you can either create a version there, but it might not be necessary. You can you could, that's just uh, sorry, merge that back into there. Okay. Perhaps don't need that uh, that feature anymore, so you can go ahead and delete it, and then if it's if it's something which is, is thinking is pending, is going to go into release, then go ahead and create a version. Okay, and this we'll call it zero point two. Okay, so from any of these branches, these versions within a branch, you can branch off and add more features or or do whatever you want, create drawings. Uh, you know, simplify for FEA. Anything, anything you need to do in there, and then, and then, let's like say when you when you're ready to go back into uh, release, then merge any of those changes from the 0 0.2 uh, back into the um, into the main release, and then release that as well. Okay, so it is clearly a little bit more work than uh, Git style uh, data management for software because that is very automated uh, like i say the the stuff that it's doing is considerably more simple but uh, it is possible to to replicate that same kind of workflow uh, within a 3d model and especially if you've got multiple people working on it 
following this type of uh, interaction or this you know this type of process now it's also important that you create versions inside your development branch because if somebody does go ahead and delete that branch what you'll see is that the versions remain okay so if you got to that point and then you deleted the development branch the parts released it's out in the field yeah, it comes back there's an issue you need to create an ECO then you can do that directly from either from the release okay or from uh, the branch so if you if you branch to create workspace uh, from there and we'll call it dev again what you'll see it just adds it to the end it doesn't create a new separate branch it just adds it onto the end of there okay so there is a way out of that if you if you do accidentally delete it now a couple of things I just also want to mention about releases because sorry a version I should say is because a version versions the entire document if you have this part set as a um, as a linked document in a, another assembly in another document then every time you create one of these releases here oh sorry one of these versions you should say then it will flag as out of date uh, within the um, uh, within the main assembly and even though we're in a different branch you if you updated that linked document in the other document it would show the dev branch rather than the main branch okay so that again is something which is not ideal uh, but um, you know, it all depends on whether you see the value in actually doing this type of flow to be able to work uh, inside um, or this type of process. So the question here, uh, is this Git style, is it part of Onshape or is it separate tools that user needs to purchase? That's a very good question. So this, um, one of the nice things about Onshape is that the data management tools are built in. So there's nothing else that you need to buy or add on. When you create Oh, so when you log into Onshape, you're presented with this uh, this document screen, where you could when this is essentially the data management. Uh, whereas with an old file based CAD, you create the parts and you then buy the PDM software to manage those files. Uh, it's kind of like the other way around. You know, doc, uh, Onshape was built from the from scratch as a data management system, and then the CAD was built on top. So it's done the opposite way around. So in order to get to the CAD files, you have to go through the data management, if you like, which is this documents page. So if I go back to my um, my document here, and in fact, you can see here, it's telling me that the name of the document and dev is the name of the branch. If I right click on here and select uh, versions and history, then that version graph that we saw earlier is available here. So you don't have to open the document in order to see that. You can then say, okay, well, I can either go into the dev branch or I can go into the release branch or I can go right into uh, the rev A here and see what that is. And again, we can just go ahead, right click and open that. And that's then going to show me the part at rev A. So again, if somebody is, um, is using Onshape on the shop floor or sales guys or purchasing or anything like that, uh, then if they open documents in that fashion, so they always know that they're actually going to see a specific revision or a version rather than the latest design changes. Okay, so you do get all that capability uh, built in. Okay, so question here is when you delete a branch, what happens to the history of the part? Um, well, when you, that's, yes, if you delete the branch, it's, it's you're essentially removing the workspace. So that's essentially uh, from a, if you think about it as, as, a, as CAD files, you eventually deleted those files that were saved as. Okay, so they're gone forever. Now the changes have been merged in. That, that comes in as one, uh, one uh, micro edit. So, um, so here, for example, um, where I had merged from 0 0.1 into there, it just comes as one, uh, one line item within the history. So you can go forward or back between uh, you know before that or after it but there is no um, but you can't see what those changes were uh, good question uh, if however you created a version within the branch then you'll get all those changes in there so it's only if there's no versions in there you go ahead and delete a branch it's almost saying you know you don't want it anymore question here can we block user to download or export files uh, the answer is yes 
uh, you get different levels of that depending on, uh, on on what you're using with sorry what edition of Onshape you're using. Actually, I'm showing here is Onshape Enterprise that has more control because it has the concept of projects. So uh, for a particular oops, so for a particular project, you can specify. Uh, can specify roles of what people can do. And in fact, because this one is set to uh, restricted access, you can see the permissions here. So there's no export or download. The, the other way to do that is if I was to share this document with somebody else, okay, you can see there, there is options to view or edit. There's also options to export, copy, uh, share, uh, which you can turn these off. So you can actually have somebody who can edit it. So if you're working with a supplier uh, a trusted supplier, you want them to actually edit the data, but not download it, then they can edit it and comment, for example, or even not comment. Um, so they can edit it, but they can't download it. More likely with a supplier, you might want to, sorry, you might want to set it to uh, view only and comment if they just need to do an RFQ, or if they are an approved supplier and they need to export it to Mastercam, for example, then you can give them view capabilities and export. So you've got those, those that granular level of control and what people can do with your data. One of the benefits of um, Onshape Enterprise is that you get the all the uh, data analytics so you can see who has actually exported your files and what they've actually done with them. Okay. All right, so uh, we're, we're, at the, we're at the top of the hour. So, um, so I'm, I'm pretty much done. So unless anybody's got any uh, uh, any other questions, um, then I will wrap it up there. Like I say, I'll stay on the line for uh, another 10 minutes or so if anybody needs to ask any more questions. But other than that, I'd like to thank you very much for attending the webinar and have a great day. Thank you.